Used rooftop solar panels are basically free these days. People upgrade or the house gets pulled down and they, these just get thrown out. Uh, you can get panels like this at the local recycling centre for about $30, which is pretty good for 250 watt panels. All the ones I've got still seem to work uh, basically to specifications, which is pretty good. After 10 or 15 years sitting up on the roof, they're very well made. Now, the only problem with them, of course, is that they're uh, 30 or 36 volt panels. So uh, you could charge a 12 volt battery. Um, of course, the panel voltage would drop to about 15 or 20 volts and a big battery would cope, but uh, it's a pretty inefficient because you're only going to get uh, the current that um, it's rated for. So uh, if you parallel up the 12 volt segments, you can get uh, three times the current or whatever. And so it's an 8 amp panel at 36 volts, you can get, uh, you know, um, 24, what's the, 3 eighths of 24, aren't they? Um, you can get 24 ampies at uh, 12 volts DC, which isn't too bad. Of course, you could <laughs> spend a few hundred dollars and buy an MPPT uh, microprocessor controlled charge, um, uh, battery charge unit. And that's <laughs> probably the way I'll go because uh, uh, it's regulated and you can set the parameters. These junk type panels are useful to leave lying around to run pumps and things unattended. It seems to work okay after being underwater for a while. Now typically the connection boxes look something like this. So you've got, uh, that's all negative down there, and you've got um, negative plus 12 plus 24 plus 36. And the reason they bring these out in the connection box is they put these diodes across um, so that if part of the solar panel gets in shade it uh, doesn't totally wreck it for the rest of it, it's just that part of the panel um, gets bypassed. So um, you can't actually get three separate 12 volts the way it's wired. Now most panels will be wired something like this. There's the diode across the uh, panel. Uh, one of the segments, you can get rid of that, cut that off. Now I've, I've represent, represented them as batteries, but they, these are solar panels, 12 volt EMF each. Now um, they're wired up like this in series, so you can get 12, 24 and 36 volts from that uh, connector box, but you can't parallel them up and get um, uh, higher current because they're in the common series mode there. So what you have to do is cut here and cut there and then you're, you can um, make a parallel connection so then you can see you've got three separate 12 volt segments so you can connect them up in parallel now that's the way uh, the finished product there's some strobing going on there I wonder if it's uh, just on my viewfinder but anyway as you can see we've now got um, three 12 volt panels in parallel and that gives us 12 volts by three times the current we would have got at 36 volts and uh, yeah so you, you dig in the panel and try and do that which isn't quite as simple as it seems as I'll show you later but uh, that's the basic idea. Now what makes it hard is the panels are wired up with these like uh, flat strips, uh, copper strips and it looks like there's just one if you try and look through the panel or when you dig into it just look at the strips but basically it's made up like you've got um, a positive strip and a negative strip separated by an insulation in between and it really just does look like one, one strip of metal but if you have to dig a little um, thin screwdriver into the end and it'll pair, pair off and you can see it's actually two conductors are positive and negative separated by some plastic or something in the middle so uh, that's uh, a bit dicey to uh, to dig into that but it can be done but uh, if you look through the panel uh, it, it isn't, doesn't really indicate the circuit because it's all one thing Now the easiest panels to deal with are ones that are made up of three sections of 12 volts. 
and you've got um, 12 panels at about 1.5 volts or something and you've got them paralleled up so you've got uh, 12 volts there 12 volts in the middle and 12 volts at the side so all you have to do is separate those and you've got a big 12 volt panel you can tell by looking at the front of the panel what's positive and negative the positive has a little arrow going down to negative so you can see that these ones are in series yet on the other side it goes the other way and uh, you can see that there and at the bottom they're joined up and they they go from the series from uh, as you can see they're a pointy they have two in parallel pointy to non pointy so uh, they're connected together to make a series string yeah, you can see from the back of the panel uh, with the sun shining through you've got the uh, the main buzz bar there and the uh, that'd be the negative side uh, going up the panels the bigger panels have three series uh, three parallel connections each uh, panel in this one case has got two um, but they're both negative and they go to that buzz bar and as you can see behind the buzz bar there's a positive as well and you can you can sort of see that there you can see uh, negative buzz bar and then the positive there. So it's a bit confusing to know what's going on with the wiring. These are fairly expensive sharp panels and you could take the top off, unscrew it um, to get to this. In some panels you have to get a hacksaw and hack through, it's only aluminium, it's pretty easy to do. So you've got easy access to these points here. So what I've done, as you can probably see, I've hacked through the, it's pretty tough stuff, really is. Um, I've hacked through to get to these connections and I've split this into the positive and the negative of the buzz bar and the same there. And on this side I've done that as well. So uh, yeah, you've got uh, positive and negative and you can see where the, uh, that strip is split and one side's positive, one side's negative and a bit of plastic or something, insulation in the middle. Now these are very tough things to try and hack through. It's not easy, um, but it can be done. Uh, so I've got both. So I've got three 12 volts in parallel. Uh, that one, I think there's still a buzz bar connected to the, con the uh, connection box. So I just left that there. I've got positive coming off there. So I've got the three positives connecting together and the three negatives connecting together. And between there, you've got, um, you know, uh, about 20 amps of DC at 12 volts, which is pretty good. Um, so it's easy on the theory. And this is one of the easiest panels to do. Some aren't as good as I'll go into next. Now this panel, although a higher powered panel, was a real pain to work on uh, because it's, uh, it's a 30 volt panel, not a 36. So it's made up of uh, a series of uh, 10, 10 segments, two in parallel. And they're actually bigger, bigger uh, cells because they've got three wires on them. So they're obviously a bit more powerful. Um, so it's only 10. So it's only a 10 volt panel if you parallel them up. Or maybe 11 and a half volts open circuit, which is not really that useful for uh, battery charging and stuff. So uh, it had to be modified a bit. Uh, you can see the, uh, the strip technology there, how the panels are joined together and everything. Yeah, this was a real nightmare to work on uh, because it was, uh, uh, well, what I had to do was to get, you know, 14 volts or whatever, I had to uh, do a series parallel arrangement with the cells, which was not easy. That's why it's all messy. Um, so I, I put the 10, two 10 volts in parallel, then I had the other set of the other set of cells I uh, uh, split and put in series so that's why it's all messy with wire and stuff everywhere and 
it took a work, while to work out what I was doing really, um, a bit confusing. So there we are. Anyway, it, it works okay, but there was a lot of work in um, in trying to get that to go. So there we are. The other panels were easy in comparison. Well, the question is, was it worth it? Probably not. It was an interesting experience, but uh, you can, for a few hundred dollars, buy a uh, software-controlled battery management box that does all of that. It converts, you know, whatever voltage the solar panel is to 12, 24, 48 volts, regulates it and sets the parameters for the, you know, tracks the panels for the best efficiency and the battery for the best charging rate, all that sort of thing. And, uh, well, I think that's probably the way to do it if you're serious. But if uh, you're on a tight budget and uh, or, or you need some bash panels just to put out in the paddock to run stuff, you don't care if they get uh, broken or you know animals smash them or something. Um, probably a good way to go. Um, yeah, spend a day <laughs> modifying some panels and then you can just set them up all around the place. Of course, the batteries are the expensive bit if you want uh, power after the sun goes down and. Uh, I think I'll probably uh, look into getting some uh, Edison batteries. You need to know your circuit theory 1H to do this. Kirchhoff's law, Ohm's law, that sort of thing. I think uh, circuit theory 1H was the only thing I passed at RMIT. Hope I don't cause a bushfire here. <laughs> 